Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments, where I'm going to be painting this Damocles drop pod from the Dinjenzi Federation in Planetfall by Spartan Games. And I'm going to be looking to paint it to this uh, tabletop gaming standard. Um, perhaps not a uh, medal winner, um, but it's good for, for general gaming purposes. So I've already based this uh, particular model with some Reeves Artist acrylic. And I've also then washed it uh, using some Vallejo model wash. Uh, this one's European dust. And that just produces a basic tonal variation uh, on the model. Uh, gives it a little bit of depth. We won't be seeing much of that anyway. Okay, so we take, uh, in this case I'm using Codex Grey, which is very mid-grey. And then we'll be going over to Fortress Grey, uh, which is much lighter grey just for the highlights. So we start with the Codex Grey. Uh, it's quite a thick uh, paint. This is quite an old Codex Grey. You can't really see it in here, but it's quite uh, gloopy. So that's fine. Uh, we really don't want uh, a good liquid paint. Uh, if we're doing dry brush, we want it to be quite thick if we can. So we take off the excess um, and then just apply it. Just try to catch all of the edges. So it's quite a light technique. Because the thing is with dry brushing, it's uh, easier to do light dry brushing and put more on in subsequent dry brushings than it is to try and remove paint. It's almost impossible to correct uh, a finish with dry brushing once you've actually got the paint onto the model. Okay, so just about uh, done with one face here, so you can see how we've just lightened the edges there. If we compare it to just the primed, you can see there's the black, the primer. Whereas here on this face, you can see how it's greyed quite a few of the faces and surfaces and edges uh, of the model. So I'm going to carry on um, just completing this and uh, you can enjoy some music. So now I've completed the dry brushing of the codex screw over the whole model. And you can see that it's got the edges just caught with that codex grey, the faces, but the recesses have remained the dark of the black primer. So that just gives it the first bit of tonal variation. You can go over, increase it on any bits that you feel need it. But otherwise you can then progress to your next dry brush layer, which as I mentioned before, I'm going to be doing in Fortress Grey. I'm going to be doing this in exactly the same method uh, that I've just done with the Codex Grey, taking off the excess paint first. You have to find it's good to, to do the last bit on your hand because you can get a real feel for how much paint is actually on your brush uh, before you then progress to actually put it on. So it should be really almost nothing. You'd be surprised how much actually comes onto the model once you've done that. Okay, so I'm going to carry on doing this and uh, then we'll come back once it's actually uh, finish with the fortress grey. Okay, so we finished the fortress grey and are comparing it to our prior painted drop pod. We can see that the finish is pretty much the same. Uh, and this is where you can correct or change, increase any uh, final highlights before you progress. So now we've actually done the dry brush on the drop pod itself, we can progress to the base. So as I mentioned before, we've actually already painted uh, the base with uh, the brown, avoiding those cracks and crevices uh, closest to the drop pod. And uh, we did that using the Reeves Artist Acrylic, um, just uh, for the general base groundwork. Um, that was covered then by a wash. So just remind you, we used the Vallejo European Dust uh, for that one. And then we're going to actually build up the dry brush groundwork on the pod using three levels of color. 
and uh, I'm going to start off with uh, this one which is uh, Citadel um, snake bite leather then go on to a desert yellow sort of a beige color I'm going to finish up with this uh, bleached bone which is a very light buff so we start with the snake bite leather and we're going to use exactly the same process that we did previously taking uh, some of the paint getting most of it off uh, on the paper uh, just really removing the last bits um, on I use say my hand um, and then we use the same technique just dry brushing across uh, the groundwork itself you can see that's just starting to, to build up the light color there take a little bit of that sheen off so I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up this and again I shall leave you with the, the time lapse and some music Okay, so we've uh, done the snake bite leather all the way around uh, on the drop pod there. And you can see how it's built up. Uh, we've got a, a mid brown tonal variation there, it's still leaving those gaps um, on the lower ground work just for that to show through. So, next part is to use the desert yellow. And again, I'm going to go through in exactly the same way and uh, just build up this level of colour on top of the groundwork and I'm going to use exactly the same technique that I did previously I'm just uh, going to go across uh, lightly brushing over the top just to catch all those highlights and ridges while still leaving the lower part of the colour to come through so I'm going to go ahead uh, complete the, the base and uh, leave you again once again with the, the time lapse So now we've finished doing the desert yellow dry brushing stage, we're going to progress straight away to putting on the bleach bone. And we build this up in exactly the same way, just going on the highlights. And you can see that coming quite quickly, you know, how that's building up now um, with the other two levels. So I shall leave you to the, the time lapse just to finish off this part of the groundwork. So now I've finished the actual painting of the, the groundwork, we can progress to the detail painting. Now I'm going to use snot green, uh, just a quite mid green, to paint these, these little detail parts, these little top parts, um, just for my unit markings. So I've got a red, a blue, and now I'm going to, to progress with a green. So you can see on the model there's a little a ridge there, I'm just going to use that as the guide for actually doing that. So again, I'll uh, paint these up and leave you uh, with the music while I do so. So now we've finished those detail painting parts, I need to put on a, a second tone with that. And I'm actually going to use some, some scorpion green um, just to actually lighten uh, the snot green I've already got. So I'm not going to use it neat, I'm going to mix it about 50-50. So I've got a very small amount of, of snot green and the scorpion green. Mix those to create a middle green that I can then use on that green, just leaving some of the 
that's not green behind at the edges, just gives a little bit of, again, a bit of tonal variation, uh, bring the green through. So I'm not going to go quite to the edge, I'm just going to use the tips. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that and leave you with the time lapse. Okay, so with the green done, it's time for the final detail, which I'm going to use this uh, Vallejo Natural Steel. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and speed up the, the mixing of this with water, just get it right consistency, uh, and I can do the detail. So I can do these little uh, piston arms here, and these, these little tubes at the top. Um, so while I go ahead and uh, get on with that detail painting, uh, I'll leave you uh, with the time lapse once again, and with some music. Okay, so with that detail painted, I'm just actually going to use a wet brush technique, which is a little bit more on the dry brush, but not quite a fully loaded brush. Um, just to highlight bits on the ramp here, uh, and just at the end where the troops have come out and have worn the paint off down to the down to the metal. So just a little effect, and I'll just go ahead and quickly complete that. Okay, so we're approaching the final stages. Both of the pods are, are painted now. Uh, the only step that really remains uh, to do is the groundwork to get this grass uh, where we want it on the base. So I'm just gonna use normal PVA glue for this uh, and put it all over the base. So now we can see we've got the PVA glue where we want it. I'm going to use some of this, uh, in this case, Citadel Scorch Grass, but you can use any scenic scatter that you, you feel uh, that you want and want to get the effect uh, that you desire. So it's very simple. You just get a little bit of the, the scenic scatter and you just sprinkle it over the areas where you've got the PVA glue. Just remove any excess. Uh, I usually do this over newspaper, but I'm going to just do it here just to give you the Effect, but it can get quite messy, so I'd recommend you do that. Um, and basically, just adheres to all of the, the PVA glue uh, that's on there, and it doesn't take very long. It takes a little while to dry afterwards, uh, but that's fine. So, just take off any on the edges, uh, just get the excess off your workspace, and there you can see we've got one finished drop pod. Uh, I just then usually tidy up the edges of the base just with some black paint, um, but you can see pretty comparable. And uh, thank you for watching.